I'm looking forward to the challenge uh, to help in Chief White uh, create the, the new structure of the police department and, and to move it forward. I was promoted to commander in uh, September of 2003 where, where I took command of District 1. Uh, it's Northwest Denver. Um, my bilingual skills served me greatly in that community. I, I served there until January of 2007 when I was made uh, division chief and I took command of the Special Operations Division. Um, I served in that capacity until May of 2010 when I made a lateral move over to the patrol division, which was my last assignment. But I think the desire to, to want to help others is, is uh, embedded in all of us. I just think it's important for, for the community to look at us, not just as the people in the blue suits and the, and the cars, but as human beings and, and personalize that, uh, that we do have feelings, we do make mistakes, and, and we're there to serve. I think depending on the cultures that you, that you deal with, they have different views of law enforcement. And um, you know, we have the greatest law enforcement system in the world. And I just think it's important for us to be able to reach out to all segments of the community. Again, being bilingual helps me to, to do that on a daily basis. I, I have high expectations of myself. And I carry that on to the people that I, that I supervise. And really, I just would like people to continue doing their job like, like I know they're capable of doing. You know, in, in the eighth grade, I actually took an aptitude test and I scored high for serving in law enforcement and I kind of took an interest to it so I started to do some some research and and talk to people officers in the in the district that I worked that I lived in that I grew up in which is district 4 in fact I remember as a young um, high schooler talking to an officer who ended up uh, I ended up working with him in district 4 as a recruit officer uh, once graduating from the academy Going to District 4, you are just nervous as, as heck. You're, I remember walking in with probably more stuff than I needed, carrying a briefcase, and everybody's looking at you because, because you're, you and your fellow classmates are the only ones who, who are pressed and ready to go, especially on that morning shift. Everybody's drinking coffee, and we're standing at attention, ready to go. And I just uh, remember a t my TO at the time just kind of looking at me and telling me not to touch anything until he was ready to, to tell me what to, what to touch. Um, <clears throat> it was winter, and uh, I, this training officer is just, I'm sure, just beside himself looking at, at this kid who's 22 years old and, and uh, not knowing anything according to him. And I remember getting, um, we didn't have computers in, in the cars, obviously, so <clears throat> I remember having a, a log sheet that I would just kept making mistakes on. And I think he set me up because he took the white out and he put it right by the heater. And towards the end of the day, he asked me to fix this. So as I opened up the white out, it exploded. And I had all this white out on my pressed and ready to go uniform. So I was quite embarrassed walking back into the station like that. And I think everybody knew what he had done because obviously I wasn't the first victim of that. So 